All right, hey guys, uh, so welcome to our vlog. This is Soila and Curtis. Uh, if you are new, Karibu Sana, you can subscribe. Uh, we try to give you guys very tasty content every, <laughs> every once in a while. Uh, yeah, so we've been doing a series, it's called How to Pull Off the Perfect Wedding and uh, it's a five or six part series, we are yet to decide how we are going to schedule it. And sorry, we've been a bit late, last week we didn't uh, upload anything, things have been crazy, it's just, you know how January things are, trying to organize things for the year. So yeah, there are a lot of craziness that was happening around, but at least we finally managed to, to get time. Yes! To continue, and, and this is part three. Mm -hmm. We've hit over a thousand subscribers in our channel. Like you guys are so lovely. Thank you so much for every person that hits the subscribe button for every individual that takes time to comment. Mm. So today's today so today's topic. topic is the wedding planning. So now the assumption of this topic of today is that you've now done the proposal of which you remember what we said, there's no specific way of how to propose, it's really personal, it's really individual. There's meeting the parents, that depends with culture and probably your values as a person. And now we are going to planning the weddings. Uh, I know there are many types of weddings, some people go to the AG, some people just do a traditional wedding and all that. The first thing we usually tell guys, and it's what we discovered, there's the issue of the committee. <laughs> this is what we usually tell guys. When it comes to wedding planning, nobody should be... Nobody should be on top of things more than the couple is. In other words, this is what we usually tell guys. It's good to have a committee. You know, you've set up a committee and you've talked with your committee. You've given guys duties, they've said, okay, I'll sort, sorry, I'll sort this part out, I'll sort this part out, I'll buy for you, I'll follow up on this, which is okay. But what we usually discovered with Soela is that, you see, your wedding is, is it's, first of all, it's personal before it becomes a society thing or a communal thing. So which means some of the things you want to see in your wedding must be your expression. It must be, it, it must somehow touch on the identity of who you are as a couple. So the things that you like, how you want the decor to be, how you want the food to be, how you want the cake to be, all those things. I think as a couple, it, it needs to be first your responsibility before you give it to the, mm. to the committee guys. Mm. Which means that you first have to go see these people on your own. Like the service meet providers? The, yeah, meet the caterer as a couple, tell them this is what you want. Meet the service, the, 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 the decor, tell her or him this is how we want it done. Meet the cake person. All those things you want in your wedding, tell them how you want it done. And then once you've agreed with them, now you can delegate the things to, to the committee. Because the tricky part is this. You might give your best friend or somebody in the committee a task to go sort this particular issue out or this particular issue out. But the risk in that is that they'll probably look for something that suits their preference. You understand? It may not be bad, but it's not really what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's usually the risk. Mm -hmm. So you de decide what you want, identify how you want it done, and then now look for guys to follow it up on that as you handle other things. Mm -hmm. You have to start early when it comes to wedding planning, identifying caterers, identifying a, a deco person, identifying toilet providers. Literally all the service providers, you have to identify them as early as possible so that by the time you're constituting a logistics team mm -hmm. that is going to do a follow-up, you have already met all the service providers, you have told them your vision, you know what you want, and then from there you can now give the different tasks to different individuals to go and follow up for you. But mm -hmm. you have done the bulk of the work. Mm -hmm. Committees just to follow up and probably mm -hmm. issue the money. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, let them not make decisions for you. You have decided mm. on the color that you want. You've decided on the kind of stable setup that you want. You've decided on the menu. Go for food testing yourself. Don't send someone from your logistics team. Do the food testing yourself. The family wants to be involved. And then you, mm. you have your own view of your wedding. Yeah. So this is what, what, what I've seen, what I've heard before is that there is, let's say you, are, you come from Nairobi. 
you and your fiance are in Nairobi and then you have you have your own logistics team in Nairobi and then your mother and aunties on the other side they have another another logistics team mm. in Ushago yeah. preparing for what for the <laughs> same wedding so I, I don't know how that one works it's, I, it's really <laughs> tricky because as a couple you, you there's a way you want this wedding to look like yes your relatives back in the village they have their own there's idea. a way they want this wedding to look like and that's why you have to put your foot down it's really good if your family comes to your wedding. It's really good because actually I think a lot of gifts usually come from relatives. Yes. They usually help out a lot. Yeah. But there's a place where you have to put your foot down and say we will not have this. We will not have this and that. Because one thing, and I think we'll discuss this when you're now talking about the wedding day itself mm. and the things that happen. Mm. There are a lot of people whose weddings became disappointing because family took over. Or because you just want no. to impress the family members you and you forget about family. what you yes. want as a couple. Yes. And it might bring wrangles between mm. yourself. Because mm. you, let's say as a lady, you want purple and white. And then your family members are like, Ay, purple and white, apana. let's say your auntie or whoever who's like speaking on behalf of mm. your family members, they're like, I think this and this would work. Ama, you, you want shivari chairs. And then, then they're like, that's too expensive, use plastic chairs. You see, you're literally... Uh, you, you have a vision, you, you have, have, you have goals. Of, yes, you're literally giving away so much so that you can impress what your family members are. Mm. The wedding planning process is a hmm, it's a sensitive process. You either are going to be strong as individuals or you're going to be separated. You tell me, Arus and Yanani, is it a girl's thingy or is it a man's thingy? Who should thingy? Ah. I know we've heard of, ah, you know... Like there are men who like, literally just say, Hey, like you, you just tell me, so la, this is our wedding, I don't know what we need to have, I don't know what, what flowers are what flowers, I don't know colors, you decide for us. There's this concept, yeah, what you're saying. I know the, it's something that has been there where men just decide, ah, the wedding is the ladies. Yeah. So, so let me go to sort out other things, let me look for money, the lady will sort out. Yeah. I personally think that's hogwash because this <laughs> chick is not going to stand there at the altar saying vows to herself. She's going to stand there with her husband. So it's a joint venture. At the end of the day, it's, it's, the wedding is expressing the personality and the identity of the couple, yeah. not, not one person in the couple. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be. You know, so that. it's just now, an invitation for mm, men to come and also participate mm, in the wedding planning process. Yeah. Even if it's, you don't have to be all up in, 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 in yeah, there's some nitty gritty that yeah, yeah, you really don't small, know about. Small things here yeah. and, and then now the really important thing, and this one we must talk about. Can you tell them the truth? Mm -hmm. We are we are here. That's why I didn't even like. Can you tell them? Can you listen, tell the guys listen, the truth? listen, mm -hmm. honey. That's mm -hmm. why I didn't even have like makeup on. I'm literally bare face because we are going to be bare with you regarding wedding planning. Yeah, that's a nice excuse, eh? <laughs> that, that has nothing to do with her makeup. She was just. Let me keep quiet. <gasps> No, it's true. She was busy at one time. Money. Now, a wedding that didn't cost so much, probably it cost like 50k or 100,000. And a wedding that cost 10, 10, 10 million. So you have a 50k wedding here and a 10 million wedding here. Do you know which wedding is blessed more than the other? Truth. Tell the truth. <laughs> Why are you so dramatic? Guess, guess. Which wedding is actually blessed? Both weddings are blessed. Which wedding is blessed more than the other? The 10 million one or the 50,000 one? Both weddings are blessed. Hallelujah. You think she's right? Yeah. So you married me. Okay, she's right. I'm just trying to put drama. <laughs> but that's the thing. I think we put so much pressure on having an expensive wedding. And guys, you know, expensive weddings mean... What weddings? Expensive. <laughs> expensive weddings mean nothing. Oh, really, Gattis? No, it's like... No, there's I... a specific context okay. I'm, I'm speaking lay about. Lay your context. Let me lay the context. Yeah, so that you don't like... I usually people. tell people operate within the realm of your grace if god has graced you to pull oh, a wedding oh my god. 
<laughs> of 50,000, <000, laughs> pull that wedding the best way you can. Yeah. If God has graced you to pull a wedding of 1M, 2M, 5M, pull that wedding the best way you can. If there is no grace, don't die. Don't break the banks. I, I, I'm sure most of us knew, saw the, the news about the, the couple that did a wedding for a hundred. A hundred bob wedding. I love it. It has got nothing to do with how magnanimous. The size of the... The, the, the magnanim, magnanimity. Okay. The glamour of your wedding has got nothing to do with the success of your marriage. And I think that's one thing we need to put across clear. Sometimes we, we, we pursue big weddings as though... It's a guarantee that a marriage will survive, mm. which is not true. Mm. So the money bit is really something to consider. You don't have to have 500 guests. Now, if you want to have 500 guests and you have the grace to pull that off without pressure, without robbing the banks, without doing something, without taking a loan, go for it. So I usually tell people there's no in terms of in terms of expenses and in terms of finances and expenditure, there's no better wedding than the other. It really depends on you as an individual. You know, it depends with your vision. Mm -hmm. It depends with your purpose. Why are you doing this big wedding? Are you trying to prove a point to people? Are you trying to show off? Mm -hmm. Or are you just doing it because it's your style and you can afford it? Yeah. So that's really personal. And I think it comes from mm -hmm. a place of you want to compare your wedding to your friend's wedding. Mm -hmm. Or you want to pull off a better wedding than someone else's wedding. Mm -hmm. And we forget that where you're supposed to be coming from is what the both of you want. Mm -hmm. So let's say if as a woman, they mo the, most of them say that the money comes, planning the wedding itself, the money is supposed to come from the man's side. Mm -hmm. So as a woman, you have seen an individual who has done a fantastic wedding, one of your friends, one of your relatives, and you want just to like, be on top of that. You put so much pressure on the guy or the guy's family to be able to provide for a magnanimous wedding, a big wedding, mm -hmm. a glamorous wedding, that you know is like literally out of your budget. And when you're talking about wedding planning, you work from reverse. You have a budget. Already just know we're working with 10 million. Don't work with um, service first and then pesa mm -hmm. Just know we are working with, let's say, 1 million shillings. Mm -hmm. 1 million shillings. You, let's divide it to, do, to the different service providers that we are going to have in our wedding. You decide, like, for example, Deco. For Deco, we, maximum that you're going to spend in Deco is like 200,000. Mm. So you know 200,000 has literally gone to... Or you decide where you're going to splurge on. Mm. The most expensive thing is for you to decide, are you going to splurge on the Deco? Mm. Are you going to splurge a lot on food? Mm. Or the grounds? Mm. So you just decide which one is the most expensive aspect of your wedding. Mm. Or are you going to splurge on your clothes? Mm -hmm. Or your rings? You just decide which one and then from there set that money aside. Mm. And then from there now allocate the amount of money, the funds that you have to the different uh, services that you still need in your wedding. Mm -hmm. It's like working in reverse. Mm -hmm. So that now you know if you have 200,000 for your deco, you go to different people. You have identified the things that you want in your deco. Now you go to different service providers. Cross them out. If you think you are too expensive for me, okay. You have decided this and this is all you're going to have. If I want, if I want life flowers, okay, like literally life flowers are most expensive if you want to use them as, as, as centerpieces. You can, if you love life, me, I love life flowers and that's why I use them. Uh, but there are guys who will just use like bottles and those fake flowers mm -hmm. as their deco, as their what? Their deco as their centerpieces. And that one is a bit cheaper. So you will just decide what you want to have. And whoever the service, like the service provider that will give you the best of a lot of what you want, uh, at a lesser cost or at the, amount, at the amount of money that you have to offer, then you go with them. Mm -hmm. Same as photography and videography, you know? Mm -hmm. And also your honeymoon. Mm -hmm. As in, literally, you actually, have to pick which one is the most I, I usually, pleasant. I usually tell people, if you're at a place of compromise where one has to suffer for the other one to be better, I'd rather the wedding suffers. The suffering might sound like a harsh term, but you understand what I'm saying. I'd rather the wedding suffers in, in, in the sense that you, you, I'd rather you compromise some things in the wedding but have a fabulous honeymoon. Because you see, a wedding is a one-day thing. But a honeymoon is something, it's like the foundation of now where your, the marriage really, really starts. And a honeymoon is usually something for days. So I'd rather you have a fantastic honeymoon. Pay attention to the nitty-gritty of the planning. Because there are certain things people overlook. It may look like a small thing, but on the wedding it will blow up to be something so huge. 
So pay attention to such things like that. The the deco, the minute details that appear inconsequential. Pay attention to that. In our wedding, we we came into the the altar with uh, horses. I came in riding on a horse. So Ella was supposed to come in riding on a horse. We had even gone for horse training. Nini nini. Ah, we were ready. Yeah. Now the problem is the horse guys, because horses are very funny creatures. They get moody over weird things. They can get moody over the color of your dress, over some smell. Or actually, people usually say horses are like babies. They are, it's like there's a spiritual thing to them. When you, have a, when you have a heart that is not really good, it can pick up on that and actually start acting out. So when you're dealing with horses, you have to understand that they are really sensitive creatures. So the horse that Soila was supposed to ride on, the horse guys didn't give... There's usually a cone, a cone that a horse usually put on the eyes so that it doesn't see the things here on the, on the sides. They didn't put that. And Soila's dress was dazzling white. And it was ivory, but it's like it has it had sparkles like, yeah. of, of silver. So it's like the moment the horse just saw that, it started. We we'll put the video no, there. No, we'll no, 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 there. you're not getting on me. No, 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 no. So it refused. It was, it was drama, and me, I was not ready to, to go home with our wife. <laughs> Let me tell you guys. It was just guy... broken bones on the wedding day. We talk about Gary, we can find a horse. And it was Jeddah. Jada alikuwa poa sana during rehearsals kwa sababu nimeenda na yeye mara mbili. Kwanza vile nilishuka tu kwa gari ikaniona ika take like five steps behind. Alafu ikamua ah ah hapa we are not doing this. And then it was looking at me na hii side ya macho kwa sababu nimekuja na hii side ya nyuma. Hey. Jada. Hakin do something wrong. So when you get on top of it, it can't like shake. So I could feel it shaking on my thigh area. Because my way, 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 way. How can I allow him to end? And I have to be shook. So my mother is like, "Apana soila, just relax. Allow him to relax. Get your head relax." I can't believe he has it. Can we start to end? Kwa hiyo kuteremka downstairs ikakataa kwenda. Kataa kabisa kwenda. Akasema, "Ai, okay. Sawa, sawa. Let's try another route." Tukaenda another route. Kwa hiyo kupanda ikakataa kupanda. Mimi nikasema, "Eh, hey, anyway, kwa sababu imekataa and the thing is shaking, inaweza nirusha juu." So tushuke tu, my parents will hold my hands and we'll walk down the aisle. It was a scary experience for a bride. Utai kuanguka chini, it's your wedding day. Cameras are all around you and and people are taking photos and people are waiting for you on the other side. So kuna suspense. On the other side, nothing is happening. So those are the, some of the things that you really need to pay attention about. Oh, we should I have guess. said this at the beginning. So the disclaimer. And the disclaimer in this series is that whatever we are giving you is not cast on stone. It is not what is right. It is not the gospel according to Soila and Curtis. That is truth. It is basically what we have seen, what we have experienced, what we have observed, and what we are recommending. Yeah. If you have other ways of... of, of, of of doing your wedding of planning your wedding well and good we are not trying to say that if you did it opposite from what you have done then you did it wrong mm. that's not it mm. if you did it in another way and it worked share because people really need to know you know there are many ways that they can do it and still be successful <coughs> the same. Mm. so and probably just to conclude this particular video because the main thing about wedding planning is identifying your perfect service providers and uh looking at them alongside your budget mm. do not break your bank to be able to pull a glamorous wedding as he has said you can work perfectly with your 50000 to ensure that you have something good you don't have to sit or on even 10k they really just sit on on mm. on hay hay stacks hay what hay stacks put lessos or let people sit on the grass you know and and If, and, and sorry sorry for cutting you this is the place where you need to be tough with your relatives. You know what usually makes weddings expensive? Relatives and the number of people that yeah. are going to come to your wedding. Me and Soila have decided we don't have that many people that we would want in our wedding. If you can count the people who have truly been there for us, they are not even more than 50 or 100. So as we've decided we want our wedding of 100 people. But her family decides no. Everybody in her village must know she's married. So, so they want to bring 500. My family on the other side is like no. 
Hata sisi lazima watu waje kijana wetu anaoa they have to know our son is getting married they bring 500 So on top of the 100 that Soela and I wanted we have a thousand more people who are coming and you know the thing about wedding is that the bigger the number the more quality has to reduce because now you have to do things that are generic to fit your budget yeah. So these are the things you have to speak to your parents you have to speak to who your sponsors are because one thing that relatives and parents usually have they see, they see they feel that since they are bringing in cash then they have a say in how things should run yeah you need to sit down with them talk with them you'd rather have quality of a quantity yeah. have a small wedding very elegant mm -hmm. very nice than to have something so huge and then the food is just there the it's, seats are yeah. just there because now you are trying to buy cheap things so that the budget can fit and it's not necessary for you to be able to achieve that sometimes when you sit down with your parents and discuss this matter i know for most africans the traditional wedding is like a big thing mm. let them go big on the traditional wedding let everybody come for the traditional Actually, wedding that's what you and do. then when it comes mm. to your little like your white wedding, mm -hmm. then there you can actually minimize and say, Mommy, Daddy, we'd want to have lesser people mm -hmm. in this in our white wedding. So we will work with 200 people or 100 guys. But people in the village mm -hmm. would still know that you're married mm -hmm. by them attending your traditional wedding. They don't mm -hmm. have to come to their white wedding. Mm -hmm. So if you give them that chance to be in your traditional wedding, they are fed by your family members. Mm -hmm. They'll enjoy seeing you and your husband there. Let them have the fun. Let mm. them have a blast mm. there. And then when it comes to your white, white wedding, then... Just do it small. Yes. Nice. And quality. I know if... Uh, there's no particular order, because we don't mm. want to write things on the paper. There's no particular order on how we put up different points. Just identify them. Mm. Pick something that you think will work with you and run with it, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. And um, I think we'll have to end this video because it has already long enough. Mm. Um, as always, you like... You share you subscribe and if you like it hit the bell button the bell button the bell button that will notify you whenever we upload a video which is like every tuesday what are you, are you laughing at me the queen of extra no so <laughs> every tuesday we'll upload a video it might be tuesday at night because sometimes think Things just yeah. don't work with us. Think work, things work against us. Mm. That we can even upload like at 12 at night. And our year is just about to get super busy. We are not going to abandon you guys. Um, we will still put up videos whenever. But if you see, we are a bit inconsistent. For the month of February, because we are trying to adjust to some new developments that we have in our lives. <laughs> not these developments, but other developments. Yeah? <laughs> not that particular one that you guys want to ask about, but yes. Uh, so, and remember, prepare your questions. We'll do a QA and a at the end of this whole series. DM me, yeah. DM Curtis. If yeah. you know, we'll put, now, gosh, we've never put our Instagram, hand, Instagram. Uh, Instagram handles. Description, eh? we'll put them at the description. Or even on the video itself. So you video. guys, as you're at watching, you can just be able to go and like us and follow us and ask mm. the question. We love yeah, the and videos. just so that you know you're not lost, my Instagram has a lot of art. It's basically an art page. Her Instagram is a lot of lifestyle, beauty, and stuff and this like man. that. It's a lot of us and a lot of food. And this man. Hi guys. Sawa sawa. Nagota? Mwa. Bye.